Okay, uh, seeing that it's six o'clock, uh, I'd like to uh, like to kick off our meeting tonight. Um, just a note to mention that we're again with the partnership of WCTV, they are uh, live streaming our meeting this evening. This meeting is being recorded. Um, certainly we'll continue to try and do all that we can to make uh, these meetings and this information available for members of our community who are following this really important and exciting uh, story as we move forward. Um, thank you so much, first off, for taking the time out of uh, your busy schedule to join us as we host this first of what will be a number of community information meetings uh, on the upcoming school building project for Wilmington. For those of you that don't know, uh, me, my name is Glenn Brand. It is my pr privilege as well as pleasure to serve as the superintendent of the Wilmington Public Schools. Additionally, I also serve as the chair of the Wildwood School Building Committee. It's been a long road to get to this point in time, but I must share with you the fact that it is all becoming quite real now and very quickly as we continue to take important first steps forward on this incredibly important project for our community and our future generations of children and families here in Wilmington. Tonight represents the first of many upcoming community information opportunities that are being planned to help try and ensure that our entire community is well informed about this important project. We have opted to hold tonight's meeting virtually for two reasons. First, because we could be assured that it could be recorded, as I mentioned it is, uh, which uh, we know is very important for others who might not have the chance to join to be able to view afterwards. And second, because we've also learned that virtual or remote opportunities have served us and continue to serve us well to engage members of our community who are obviously all leading very busy lives and sometimes find it very challenging to come out for an in-person meeting. However, with that said, I can also assure you that in the future, we will definitely be planning in-person meetings. So please stay tuned for those opportunities uh, of which we are uh, certainly intending to plan and deliver um, in due course. For a project such as this, there are essentially, when I think about this, four vitally important partners who will help ultimately achieve our ends. The first is, of course, our community in Wilmington, including our staff and our many, many residents. The second, in this particular case and with this particular project, is the Massachusetts School Building Authority, or MSBA, who remains currently still the only grant funding entity in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts to help local communities offset the costs of new school construction or renovation. And as well, two other important partners are the town's designer and owner's project manager, or OPM as we refer to them. Both of these organizations were hired through a very public and very transparent process, actually regulated by the MSBA last spring. That selection process also included representatives from the school committee, select board, the finance committee, as well as town and school administration. And it's with pleasure that I introduce to them uh, them to you this evening. Our owner's project manager or OPM is the firm SMMA and working on this project and here with us tonight are Julie LaDuke and Sarah Trinello. Our design firm is Doran Whittier and their team includes Lee Dorr, Don Walter, Jason Boone and Roddy Phillip. Representatives from the town, including members from the town manager's office and some of their key staff, along with representatives from the superintendent's office, have been meeting with both the OPM and the design firm weekly for the last five to six months. And I can tell you that we are in great hands with these folks who at the end of the day, want nothing more than this project to be successful for our community. Tonight's meeting is intended to provide the community with information on two very important and broad topics. The first, an overview of the MSBA process and our community's engagement with this program. And secondly, a preliminary report of the work to date that ev evaluates and is taking into account the existing conditions of our schools. On that point, I'd ask you to keep in mind that for this project, the MSBA has agreed to allow us, Wilmington, to look at the Wildwood School along with the Woburn and North schools only. These three elementary schools on the, the three elementary schools, I'm sorry, in the west side of town are not and cannot be included as part of this specific project or this specific study. Before I turn it over to our design team, Doran Whittier, let me take this opportunity and just address a few logistics for this meeting this evening. First, again, as we mentioned, we are being broadcast live on WCTV. And again, a recording of this session will be made available afterwards and posted not only on their website, but also on the district's website. Second, with the anticipation that we will have many in attendance tonight uh, joining in to learn more about this project, 
We have arranged the settings or the logistics for this Zoom meeting so, such that when guests join, um, most will be automatically muted. I say most, there are some exceptions that, that includes members of our uh, respective teams that are here tonight to present. We are going to have a fairly extensive presentation upcoming in just a moment to start us off. And then as time permits, we will open it up for questions from uh, guests, should you have any. Uh, and to do that, I would just ask that you raise your virtual hand and then we'll, um, we'll unmute you and allow you to, uh, to ask your question. I will point out that we do need to end tonight's meeting around seven o'clock as we need to transition to the formal Wildwood School Building Committee meeting that's taking place also virtually afterwards. Anyone who's attending is welcome to join that meeting. They are public meetings and open to anyone, uh, but we, we need to uh, try and move on, as I said, around seven o'clock for that. With all of that said, thank you again for taking the time to join tonight. And it is my pleasure to now turn it over to uh, Ronnie from Doran Whittier, who is going to take you through uh, their presentation. Ronnie, thanks for being here. Good evening. Ronnie, we can't hear you. Can you hear me now? There we go. All right, thanks everybody and welcome to the meeting. I appreciate everyone taking the time out this evening. I'm sure everyone is busy, but I hope you find this information valuable uh, as we walk, uh, begin the MSBA process for um, the Wildwood Early Childhood Center project. Today, um, Glenn has given our introductions and we will take you through the process of, of working with the MSBA and then the existing conditions of what is now and what can be, and then um, how we'll, we can stay con continually connected uh, throughout the process. As Glenn indicated, we have partnered with the MSBA. There's the school committee and the school building committee. The owner's project manager is SMMA and um, Doran Whittier uh, are your architects. The school building committee includes representatives from the town and district, including administrators, staff, and parents. There is a process we follow when partnering with the MSBA. First, the district must determine which school is in the most need. With schools of similar vintage, Wilmington continues to maintain critical building systems like HVAC and roofing. However, it doesn't change the fact that all the elementary school buildings are older, inefficient, and approaching the end of their expected life. Wildwood's Early Childhood Center was determined to be the most in need. Wildwood was accepted into the MSBA program in April of 2021. The MSBA process is divided into eight modules as shown on the screen. Each module is a checkpoint with the MSBA before proceeding to the next phase. Overall, the process can take approximately seven years. We are currently in module three, feasibility study. As part of our comprehensive approach, our process timeline and stages of implementation are very strategic. The discovery process comes first and lays the foundation, beginning with facility reviews and the educational analysis, which intentionally is scheduled in the fall to garner the greatest participation from the community. Along the way, our ongoing working group meetings and public meetings scheduled where findings and updates are reported. Community workshops are also spread out along the process, strategically placed to support more focused, ongoing conversations as the process, the vision, and options are refined. In the spring, we will refine and analyze a short list of options towards a preferred option with continued input from the community and stakeholders. Development of the selected option will reflect the principles established in the previous phases and confirm the cost impacts. 
This will be voted on by both MSPA and the town of Wilmington to continue forward with the desired project. Once project funding is approved, the design is developed for construction. Project completion is estimated in 2028 or 2029, depending on the option selected. We're currently in feasibility, which is what I've highlighted. The design team evaluated the existing school facilities and sites that are part of this project. The next several slides are intended to summarize our observations from each building and site. We are finalizing a detailed document of these observations that will be shared and eventually become part of the preliminary design program document submitted to the MSBA in the spring of 2024. We review the three school locations, Wildwood, Woburn Street, and North Intermediate. Ideally, we want to understand the potential limitations and opportunities at each location. In general, the buildings are of similar vintage, but the sizes of the sites vary. This will become evident when we get into the site design and layouts for the multiple options to be studied in the months ahead. As the facilities are experiencing similar issues, this summary is a snapshot of the information collected and applies to all three unless specifically noted. In general, the sites are located in residential areas. Specific designations that apply to each site are intended to protect the areas and can impact the buildable areas on each site. Similarly, the available utilities and conditions will impact the desirability of a particular site. Limited storm drainage infrastructure can impact the surfaces and deterioration over time. Each site has significant accessibility concerns, both in parking and paths around the site. Playground surfaces are not ADA compliant and surfaces of sports courts are in poor condition in general. The building envelopes need upgrades, ideally improving the thermal envelope for each structure. Masonry brick veneer and wall elements range from good to poor condition with no insulation. Concrete deterioration is expected given the age of the buildings. Window frames are original, glazing is replaced with a plexiglass product. However, this product is now clouded and discolored, limiting views to the exterior. The window systems at North were replaced back in 2017. Various forms of degradation were noted at doors and frames, rusting or rotting of bottoms, peeling paint, rusting hinges, antiquated hardware, or they're not accessible. Main entry and access ramps are not fully compliant as well. Hollow metal frames um, have, are with insulated doors um, were replaced back in 2017 at North. There are multiple roof areas at Wildwood. The older roof areas should be replaced if this facility will be used in the future. At Woburn, the ballasted roof areas warrant replacement. The rubber membrane roof at North is in good condition with some maintenance recommended. There are many floor finishes, um, all of which have been maintained at the schools. At Wildwood, there is a VCT in the multi-purpose room that is not ideal as a sports flooring. Learning spaces at Wildwood have an undesirable cellulose space finish coating at the ceiling, which collects particles and in, realistically is uncleanable. The glazing is clouded in these spaces, limiting views to the exterior. Doors and hardware do not meet current codes 
and the built-in furnishings are worn and dated. Spaces at Woburn have newer VCT and ceiling tiles. Similar to Wildwood, the plexiglass product glazing is clouded. If operable partitions are not utilized in these classroom spaces, they can present acoustical issues for the adjoining spaces. North intermediate finishes vary in type and condition, but overall are dated. Multiple floor levels at both Woburn and North are accessibility concerns, as no lifts or elevators are present. The stair balusters are also not code compliant. Heating and ventilation systems are operational, but at the end of their life expectancy, resulting in inefficiencies and higher costs to operate and maintain components. Components range in vintage and condition, but are operational still. Antiquated pneumatic control systems result in limited capability to control equipment, resulting in overall decreased thermal comfort. Classroom unit ventilators provide heat and ventilate spaces. Units have exceeded their life expectancy, but currently are operational. Limited spaces have cooling, either with window units or retrofitted ductless mini split units. Electrical systems range from original vintage to more recent upgrades in lighting retrofits, fire alarm, and emergency lighting. Original systems have exceeded serviceable life and would not be suitable for a renovation or expansion. LED upgrades in the last six years have improved the quality of lighting at Woburn and North. If added, occupancy sensors and daylight dimming sensors can provide greater energy efficiency. Emergency lighting is provided, but should extend to all exterior egress paths. Fire alarm systems were upgraded in 2012 and are code compliant. It is noted that there are no emergency power off switches for electrical equipment in the kitchens. In general, plumbing systems and equipment are mostly original to the buildings. Com components should be monitored for maintenance and updated as needed. Infrastructure and kitchens are outdated with non-code compliant components still present. Plumbing fixtures are not ADA compliant and lack water saving features. Although the buildings have no automatic sprinklers, extinguisher cabinets were noted in some spaces. Technology and communication systems for the facilities range from those that are original to more current systems as the district IT department works to upgrade infrastructure where possible. There is a lack of controlled and dedicated space, power, and environmental conditioning for core network equipment. Video surveillance is limited to main entries and connected to the main office for verification and entry approval. Instructional spaces are upgraded. However, with ultra-short projection technology, um, these spaces are utilizing this upgraded these upgraded features. Many of the core communication systems, however, such as the master clock systems, cannot be upgraded or expanded due to the age of the equipment. In summary, the facilities are maintained and currently operational. Inevitable infrastructure upgrades may be limited without a major project to meet current codes and ideally the educational vision in Wilmington. In our next update to the community, we will inform on the visioning sessions and the educational program. But in the meantime, here's a quick look at what could be. This is in a library space at Woburn Street School and a newer facility um, at Maria Hastings Elementary School.
this is an existing corridor here in Wilmington, and then an extended learning corridor where classroom spaces spill out into the circulation space as an extended learning area. A cafeteria or multi-purpose space. And classroom spaces. We invite interested community members to stay connected. The district website provides a link to access project updates and meetings are also streamed via WCTV. Email is also an option to submit comments or questions. The school building committee, uh, committee meetings are open to the public and occur monthly. Another community forum will be um, planned in January. Thank you. I know we've provided a lot of information. I will end the slideshow here so that we can open the open for any questions. Thanks, Ronnie. Um, just before we do, just uh, talk about some logistics here, but um, and we do want to open it up to folks that have questions. Or there is a lot of information certainly included here. We will. As well as all of the presentations, make sure that this is uploaded to our district website. Ronnie showed a, uh, a section of where that already started to amass um, all of the presentations and reports that are connected with this project. And so, uh, if anyone's interested in following up with that, we're certainly welcome to. And we would encourage you to do so. Um, we we also want to open this up for general questions. This tonight is intended to be a very very high level view. We, we thought it important that um, our community both understand, first off, the MSBA process itself. Um, it's a very regulated process, as you've got a sense of. There's lots of, um, there are lots of aspects to it that uh, communities such as ours and in this project have to, have to align with in order to keep moving forward in the grant pro program. Um, so we thought that it would be important to provide you with that overview. The second is about sort of the, the, the current state of our buildings. Uh, the term has been used as existing conditions. Uh, Ronnie, I'm going to start this off maybe as the first question. I can appreciate that um, or might imagine that some in the community are joining in and they're maybe a little bit confused in the sense of um, are, aren't we pursuing um, hopefully a new school and aren't we also ideally hopeful to explore or at least study school consolidation? And so, so if that's the case, um, why is it that, uh, you know, Doran Whittier, our partners would um, be taking a closer look at the three elementary schools in the current state of the state. So Glenn, the district was approved um, and invited into the MSBA process with the Wildwood School. However, um, MSBA agreed to look at both Woburn Street and North Intermediate as part of the process uh, for a potential consolidation of either a pre-K-3 or pre-K-5 um, enrollment. So that would give us three enrollments to look at, pre-K-K, -K, pre-K-3, and pre-K-5. And as part of that process, we are required to look at all of the existing buildings and those sites as potential options for study. So that is part of the process that we will undertake, and it will actually provide the community several, actually I shouldn't even say several, many, many options um, uh, to consider and then whittle down into um, a few select options that eventually will um, go to a preferred option for the community. Thanks, thanks Ronnie, thanks for that. Um, well, with that, um, uh, thank you for letting me to ask the first question, but the intention is to open it up for members who are here who might have questions I'll also point out, um, which I was gonna do again at the end, that if you have questions or members of the community have questions that um, are forthcoming after tonight's presentation, we have created a general email question um, address, I guess if you will, that we're gonna uh, as widely share as we can, that uh, any questions submitted there will be, um, will be directed to members of our building committee, our OPM and our design team, and we will work hard to compile those and generate responses. So this is by no means the only time to ask questions. I also just want to take this opportunity um, to see her on the screen and introduce uh, to the community uh, Vivian uh, Verbiti. And she is uh, here um, as, the, um, as the vice chair as well of the Wildwood School Building Committee uh, to help uh, yours truly. Uh, she is also a resident 
And um, as it stands, she also uh, knows this work very, very well in her professional capacity. And I know she wouldn't mind me saying that. So it's, it's great to have you Vivian on board and thanks for being here tonight as well. Thank you so much, Dr. Glenn. And I look forward to participating fully for this project. Thank you. So folks that are here tonight uh, from the community, if you have um, questions, how we're gonna try and uh, uh, try and do this is if you could raise your virtual hand and um, between either Vivian and myself, um, we will try to uh, keep tabs of who might have a question to ask. And uh, then we will unmute you, um, Vivian, if you could help me with that. Um, and uh, and then uh, certainly direct your question to uh, whomever on the team and we'll do our best to answer it. Any questions on the information that have been presented tonight or other uh, questions in regards to um, the project at this point in time? Someone can start us out. Vivian, are you seeing? Oh, we have a hand. Uh, only Barbara has raised her virtual hand. Thanks, Barb, for being first. And thanks for being here tonight. Barbara, if you wouldn't mind unmuting yourself and... Um... I think she's good to go. Um, so I was just curious about, you know, as we go through sort of all of the options. I was wondering about whether or not you're thinking about criteria for how to, to think about decision making. Obviously, it's a big project. There's lots of ways to things to consider, you know, both the educational design, sort of how teachers are interfacing with each other. So I just was interested in sort of how you might tackle, you know, so so many options and so much information coming at you and whether there'll be a structured approach um, that can help the community kind of translate um, how how sort of um, decisions are being made. Thanks, Barb. Uh, great question. I'm not sure uh, if, Julie, if you want to take a stab at that first or if that would be better for Jason or Ronnie. Yeah, no, I, I think that's a great question. I think it's a question that everyone um, kind of has on their mind. They'd like to know how the process works. And, you know, Ronnie just went through that wonderful presentation um, to explain to you what Doran Whittier has been doing through this process and, and how the MSBA plays into that. But it's uh, a great question to know what does the community's role in this process and how are the decisions being made? Um, so at the beginning of your project, um, when this committee was formed, the Wildwood School Building Committee, it was formed uh, for multiple reasons. One was to hire the OPM, which you did, and to hire the design firm, which we have. Um, but it is also the governing body for this project. So all 22 members of the Wildwood School Building Committee um, are the ones that are going to take the information that is provided to us by Doran Whittier, um, help us review it, sit down as collectively as a group in every building committee that we have, to um, take the information that's provided and uh, kind of narrow down the, the process. As Ronnie said, there will be multiple options when we start. You have three schools, um, three school options um, and three different enrollment options. And so, um, you know, that could be upwards of nine to 12 different options um, to start with. So um, having said that, we'll, we'll pare those down through those committees um, and narrow it down to the one project that we will then submit to the MSBA. Julie, do you mind if I add to that just a little bit? I would love you to, Jason. <clears throat> um, typically what Dorn Whittier does is works with the school building committee to identify specific criteria uh, you mentioned a few of them in your question. How well does the option align with the educational intent? How well does the concept fit on the site? What's the disruption to students during construction? How much does the project cost? 
So what we would, would do at each step where we're eliminating options is we would evaluate, we would first define the criteria with the school building committee, and then we would evaluate the options against that in some sort of scoring mechanism. That's, that mechanism varies community to community, <clears throat> but ultimately it's a partnership, as Julie has said, between the design team and the local community about what's important to you to both define those criteria and then see what comes out the other end once um, each option has been evaluated against that criteria. Um, I do have a sample graphic from another project. Um, we weren't, you know, didn't plan to show that, but I would, I would be willing to show that, Julie, if you think that's um, an okay idea. Yeah, I think that would be great. I think the more information that everyone in, in this uh, meeting has is the better. So this, this is a partial um, score sheet from another community where they were going from the many options to the few. And so what you're seeing down the left-hand side are um, the large criteria categories. And this community chose to write a detailed rubric um, for each one of these criteria so that it was sort of uh, objective in how the scoring worked. In their case, they chose a numeric scoring methodology, but to help the community understand how each option, which is a, <clears throat> a column across the top, was performing, they chose to color code the scoring. So then a quick eye sweep, options that were more green were performing better, options that were more red were performing less well. And so ultimately they, they were able to choose based on the highest scoring options uh, from this list. Does that help answer your question, Barbara? Excellent, thank you. Uh, next individual with their hand raised is Melissa, if you wouldn't mind unmuting yourself. I believe she lowered her hand. I don't see it raised anymore. But next individual is the, I apologize if I'm completely mispronouncing your last name, Borghese family. If you wouldn't mind uh, unmuting yourself and asking the question. Um, yes, so I'm a parent in the district, and I did participate in the visioning um, meetings that were held earlier in the past couple of months. And I was just wondering how, as a parent, do you get your um, feelings or things that you learned from those meetings to the people that are making the decision? So I know that you said there's 22 members on the deciding committee. I was just wondering um, how, as parents in the community, we could get our voices heard at those meetings or what you would suggest. That That is a great question. And I'm actually going to give that question back to Jason because he collected all of the data. Um, it will be presented at our school building meeting, meetings. Um, and, you know, all of the documentation you'll also be able to find online. Um, once those meetings are completed, we post uh, meeting minutes and we post um, all of the presentations. But um, Jason, I'm, I'm going to ask you to give more information on how you collect the data and how you disseminate it. Sure. Um, I think there's a couple of mechanisms where those who participate in visioning will be heard. Um, the first, Julie mentioned, right, we're going to report out, we're going to create presentations for the school building committee and for um, the public forums that communicate the outcomes from those sessions. The second method is we're gonna produce a formal report that documents all of the work, um, the process and the outcomes from that visioning work. If there are additional things those folks would like to share, there should be opportunities both in the public forum setting and in the school building committee setting um, for you to, to potentially speak uh, as, a, as a member of the community if that's another mechanism you're, look, you're looking for to, to share that voice. Uh, 
if I may add to that, on behalf of the school building committee, we do encourage public in involvement as well as in public participation and always have time allocated to hear from those of the public in regards to the project. So we highly encourage all of those members to join and listen in to the school building committee and voice their opinions there as well. Um, next individual with their hand raised is Michael Merchetti. If you wouldn't mind um, unmuting yourself. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, question is around the timeline. I was wondering, are there any opportunities to accelerate the timeline? And then a follow-up question I have is, are there any potential issues that could delay the timeline that may come up in this process? Thank you. Um, so at this point, um, in terms of accelerating the timeline, um, we had taken a short pause um, in, earlier in the process um, to explore the option of doing a um, one school for the entire town. Um, and due to that small little pause, um, we kind of took a lot of our float out um, so in order for us to accelerate, that would require Doran Whittier to kind of have to um, not do as much due diligence. So I, I wouldn't recommend that we accelerate. Um, there are some things that we can do during construction, whether it's early procurement packages or things like that to get the school opened potentially sooner. Um, but in terms of accelerating our schedule, uh, much more than that the answer would be probably be no. Um, and your, I'm sorry, what, your second question was? Potential delays to the project. Ah, potential delays to the projects. Um, over the last few years, we've seen some delays to our projects in terms of material availability, um, but that has um, shaken out pretty well in the most recent months where um, that's other than some electronic equipment, but that's why we do some early procurement packages if necessary. Um, so other than, other than that and not passing this at town vote, that would, I would say would be the only real delay that we have. Thank you. Um, Melissa, you have your hand raised if you wouldn't mind unmuting yourself. Hi, sorry, I was having some tech issues. Um, so I guess my question um, goes well with um, passing the town vote, but also in sort of securing the location for this project. Um, can anybody speak to conversations that might be happening with other stakeholders? Um, a big, um, very important topic in the town is uh, fire, uh, substation, a firehouse substation. Um, and I, and I just think that in terms of, uh, determining the location of this, I have to imagine or hope that, um, that conversation is being parlayed into this conversation. So sort of zooming out, um, as a town and thinking about other important projects that I know a lot of other stakeholders have interest in. And if anybody on, on this call can speak to that a little bit, I think that a lot of people may have some thoughts about that or questions about that or hopes about that. That's a great question, Melissa. Um, we are currently studying the three sites, the Wildwood, the Woburn Street and the North Intermediate. Those are the three sites that we are focusing on um, as part of this project. Um, as they have been determined through the MSBA. We are in talks with the um, interim town manager and the assistant town manager. Uh, we are aware of um, other projects that are coming up in town and we do you know, correspond, correspond with them to make sure that there's no overlap 
um, you know, we're not choosing a site that potentially could be used for something else in town. Um, we've met with the select board, the finance committee, the school committee, um, and obviously the Wildwood Building Committee as a group and individually. Um, and that is our intent moving forward is to make sure that we communicate out to all of those committees through the representatives that attend the Wildwood School Building Committee of our plans for the future. And, and part, if I could just add, a J Jason, correct me if I'm wrong, but part of uh, the final site determination is very contingent upon the size of the building. And of course, with that, um, as we're a community exploring school consolidation, uh, of which I want to take this opportunity, that has not been decided yet, certainly far from that, although we have expressed an interest to MSBA to study or to explore that possibility. But part of the final selection of a site um, does go back to how big does this building need to be, correct, Jason? That yes, um, Dr. Brand, that's one of many factors that plays into the selection of a particular option on a particular site. Um, <clears throat> other considerations may be things like, could we execute a two-story building on one site, but a three-story building on another site? That may play a role. Can we achieve the number of desired parking spaces or the separation of parent vehicles from buses? Um, how close is a project to a building that students might be occupying? So there's a whole host of, of potential considerations when choosing a site, um, but chief among them is whether or not a building of that size will actually physically fit on a particular site that we're exploring. Thanks, Jason. Uh, we still have a little bit of time if um, if there are further questions from those that are in attendance tonight. So uh, feel free to speak questions away. Again, uh, this is not by any means the only opportunity to ask questions. Uh, we will we recognize that questions will often emerge through the process and as things take shape and form and develop. So um, there will be other opportunities, but for those here tonight, if you have any other uh, questions, we certainly would welcome, welcome them. Scott, you have your hand raised, if you wouldn't mind unmuting yourself. We can't hear you, Scott. I see your mouth moving, but it's very low. Hmm. Okay, let me try to figure that out. Perfect. Better now? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, a question about the the MSBA funding for the project. Um, if we do a just a pre-K and K school, if we do a pre-K to three, if we do a pre-K to five, if we do a brand new school, if we renovate a school, does the MSBA give us the same funding for each of those projects or will it change based off of how much we require for those projects? The MSBA participates in these projects um, on a percentage base. So it's not necessarily um, based on the size of the, the dollar amount of your project, but it's based upon the eligible space requirements. So um, Doran Whittier will work with the superintendent to put together an educational plan. And in that educational plan, it will describe the types of um, class needs in terms of classrooms, bathrooms, um, gym spaces, uh, media centers and things of the such. Um, there are times where some communities decide they want a full-size gymnasium. Well, the MSBA in an elementary school doesn't participate in a full-size, let's call it a high school-size gymnasium they will um, participate in what we call either a gymatorium or they even call it a cafetorium where you have a stage on um, in the gym. Um, and so the MSBA will reimburse you for up to 
what they deem is eligible space. There's an entire form that we fill out um, uh, and is sent back and forth with the MSBA. And um, there are some spaces that maybe, and we'll use maybe special education as an example, um, that the MSBA would maybe not normally pay for, but if the school can, um, the district can determine whether or not that is an absolute need for them, they are willing to be you know, flexible in, in those specific examples. Um, but we don't like to say that the MSBA will pay a dollar amount. We use it as a percentage of eligible space. At this moment, I can't tell you that amount just so that we're all on the same page um, until we go through the entire process of determining what the, the building will eventually look like. Um, and, and until we get to that point and go through that process and put everything down on the space allocation sheet um, and share that with the MSBA um, and do our project scope and budget agreement, and that's when we'll find out the total percentage um, that will be reimbursed we will announce that um, as part of the town meeting. So everyone will be aware at town meeting, this is your share that the, um, the total project cost, this is what your share will be for the town, and this is what the MSBA share will be. And so we'll provide you all that information in advance of town meeting, but at town meeting, that information will also be available to you. Anybody wanna add anything to that? Thank you, Julie. We do have Borghese family PC. And again, I apologize um, if I mispronounced your last name, if you wouldn't mind unmuting yourself. Um, yeah, it's bourgeois, no worries. Um, oh, thank you. I, <laughs> I, I'm just kind of along those same lines. Um, when the MSBA decides on something, like say, I know, for example, in this town, a lot of the high school teams um, have to practice at different facilities. There's not um, always space for them. So say the community decided that a full-size gym would be beneficial for the whole community. Um, is there the ability for the town to just say, we'll pay for the rest of the portion of the gym? say if like, um, you know, middle school sports and high school sports were also gonna use the gym, the community at, as a whole decided that that was a good decision. Um, is that an option? Yeah, that's a great question. And I love how you phrased the community decides because at the end of the day, if, although we all understand this is a school to educate our students, it's also a community space and it's used for multiple, um, you know, reasons. Um, the gym being one of them. Um, and so, yes, to answer your question, if the community decides that they would like a larger gym space or a larger media center so that they can hold uh, town meeting in it or wh whatever it is, yes, the MSBA will agree that they will pay up to their portion, which whatever the percentage is of that space, and the town will then fund the rest of that space. It's all part of that um, space allocation and project both scope and budget agreement that I talked about just a moment ago. And as part of the school building committee, I would highly encourage you to voice those opinions as well as attend those meetings so that we can have a clear understanding of what the community needs are so that the school building committee can make an informed decision that represents the entire community. Thank you for that. Uh, Barbara, you had your hand raised next, if you wouldn't mind unmuting yourself. Um, so I have actually a question, but before that, just to clarify, um, you know, uh, opportunities for the community to sort of see the plan and have a sense and, and make a comment is through public comment at the building committee? Yeah, so there's gonna be many options um, available to the community to make comments. Um, we are gonna do numerous community forums. So this is the first of um, several that we'll be doing throughout the process. 
um, so that we are transparent with everyone in the community. We show them, um, you know, what Dorian Whittier has, um, you know, started with and, and where the direction that we're heading. Um, so there'll be those opportunities at the community forums for people to discuss what they see, you know, and they can bring that back to the building committee. Now, in the Wildwood Building Committee, we post all of the meetings. They're all public. You are welcome to join as, um, you know, parent representatives or um, in the audience. At the end, we always open for discussion about anything that we've discussed during that meeting. Um, so you are welcome to step forward and, you know, make your statements about what you've seen in that meeting, um, questions that you may have, and anything that we can address. In addition, um, we also have the email address that was shown on the screen earlier. Um, sorry, I'm pulling it up on my screen. Um, it is Wildwood Project Questions at WPSK12.com. And so we, we um, any questions that are submitted through that email address, we will respond to in 48 working hours. Um, so that, you know, you have the answers. We're also going to keep track of all the questions and we'll create a frequently asked questions section on the website. So, um, you know, people may not want to ask their questions, but they might want to see what, what have other people asked. Thank you. Um, so my actually, my question was in another complete direction. Um, so on the finance side, um, you know, this obviously is really important for us as a town to understand in terms of the total cap cost of the project. Um, and as we think about the options um, in terms of having individual schools or thinking about school con consolidation, um, one of the factors that um, is is probably a financial reality is the option to sort of think about operating costs right, running like three different plants and thinking about staffing, you know, across that and thinking about getting buses and all of it, we, we're experiencing it now, right, in terms of the challenges and the resources required to get students around town right now. So I guess my question is, is there sort of a, a financial analysis, not just of the capital project, the cost of building it, but also, um, you know, some information about how there might be savings on the operating side that help us make a decision about the long-term um, financial um, sustainability of the of the project. Yeah, absolutely. That's a that's a, a great question. And Doran Whittier has been doing their feasibility going through, you know, all of the existing buildings currently, looking at all of the systems in there, um, meeting with uh, George Hooper and his team, um, Dennis Kelly here. Um, to kind of go through what are your current operating costs? You know, we know that schools that are built now are far more efficient um, in terms of heating. Um, you know, there are incentives for um, going with things like photovoltaics and solar. Um, so those are a lot of things that we're gonna be working on um, and creating some working groups, people who might be interested in sustainability and how that can affect um, your building. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we've we since Doran Whittier has come on board, um, we've done you know a lot of conversations about what are your current operating costs on these schools. Um, you know, as Ronnie showed some of the pictures, you know, we we obviously like to take a moment to say that George Hooper and his team have done a wonderful job of keeping these you know buildings up and running. Um, you know, but we're at a time where technology is changing, buildings are changing, efficiency is changing. And um, this is the, you know, the time that you really need to look at all of those items. Um, so, yeah, in addition to that, in the, the actual plant or the facilities costs and related yes. costs, the district also um, will be in a place of need to, for the community and the MSBA, along with our educational program, um, dive deep into staffing and, you know, operational program costs from the school side. So, so if, for example, we are uh, focusing in on all of the possibilities, what, what is the comparison and contrast between staffing uh, levels? Um, if we were operating one school, uh, a couple of grades versus uh, consolidation. So that's an element of this planning as well, too, that will unfold. And in some cases, at least from my past experience and other um, projects somewhat similar to this, 
sometimes there's a, a, a best guess um, that can be applied. For example, school transportation, right? What does that maybe look like in a very, very different configuration? Um, but there's also some realities that we have to actually go on file with and submit to the MSBA uh, around which any potential building has to be um, has to be structured and built. For example, how many adults will be working in that facility to deliver programs and services? So those are those are all uh, costs, resources, and costs that um, have to be mapped out to help inform the final decision and the recommendation. So. We're, we're not there yet, and it'll be a little bit of time before we get there, but know that work's actually started on that in the background. We, we have an obligation to do so, but like everything else you're hearing, once we get to that place, it will be shared um, far and wide with our community uh, for, for everyone to see um, and, and, and help inform again the decision. -making. I think we have uh, another question and we have, that's great because I think we have time for one, maybe two more questions. Marianne, you have your hand raised, if you wouldn't mind unmuting yourself. Sure, just a quick question for Julie. If she can confirm if the MSBA actually raised the price per square foot for reimbursement in the past couple of weeks. Have you heard that? I have, yes. Um... I don't have the figure right in front of me. Vivian might actually have it. Well, see, I put her on the spot there. Uh, <laughs> um, but yes, they have raised the price per square foot. Um, uh, they recently in the MSBA board of directors meeting, they original cost per square foot where the MSBA would contribute was forever this dollar number of 333. And it has increased several times, twice in the last um, year, actually. And as it stands right now with site reimbursement, square footage costs for the building, reimbursement, I believe it is closer to a $563 or $93 per square foot reimbursement rate, which is fantastic that they have increased the dollar value to match the rate of inflation and the rate of cost for all of these municipal projects going forward. And we're fortunate enough to have come in during a period where we will be in full benefit of that increase. Great, thank you very much for confirming. Thank you. All right, well, we are um, right up against uh, uh, the hour. And as I mentioned at the outset, it, um, we, we do want to transition in just a moment here to the Wildwood School Building Committee meeting. Um, but Ronnie, if I can maybe just ask you a, a favor, could you just bring up on the slide, if you would, again, the um, the slide that you have of the membership of the Wildwood School Building Committee. Do you mind just pulling that up if you could? <clears throat> well, Ronnie's doing that. Sorry, Ronnie, put you on the spot. Um, you've heard a couple of times tonight that uh, this process, this project, and all aspects of it are, uh, it's with full and complete intention that we um, share this uh, again far and wide with all members of the community who are interested in following this uh, but in addition to that it's also been mentioned a number of times the role of the wildwood school building committee uh, a lot of names here but um, i think the important takeaways if i was a community member sort of just tuning into this who, who are these people and who are these folks that are going to be um you know pretty in, in, important and influential in making final decisions this is a big committee, um, but um, the great news, I think, from a community standpoint is we really have, um, in my opinion, representation from multiple stakeholder groups. That includes, of course, our parent guardians. That includes our elected representatives on the three governing bodies, the three uh, sort of more primary governing bodies in town, the school committee, the select board, and the finance committee. We have school administration who are on this, as well as town administration. Um, as also was mentioned a couple of times earlier tonight, um, th th this school building committee is an official um, public committee. And as such, it's subject to all of the same public meeting law requirements of the school committee and those other committees that were just mentioned. That is to say that their agendas need to be posted, their minutes need to be posted, then they are. Um, and all of the information related to these meetings 
is going to be and will continue to be accessible for any member of our community to tune in and follow. So, um, and, and the final point, as was also mentioned, as these are public meetings, anyone from our community is welcome to join and welcome to um, uh, provide feedback. And so uh, just I wanted to bring attention to that because I think that this is an important piece and quite honestly, something that I'm hopeful that our community members are proud of. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a large committee, but um, there's representation, I think, from all of the uh, very, very important groups that are connected, of course, to ultimately this project. So thanks, Ronnie, for pulling that up. Um, with that, again, I, I just want to take this opportunity, a couple of reminders for those that may not have been here tonight, and people are hopefully talking about this. There's a recording of this meeting, and we will post it as soon as it's available. Um, this is the first of many opportunities that will be forthcoming in the coming months to get uh, tuned in and up to speed with this project as it's taking shape and form. Um, it's a long path. It's a long road. We've got a lot of work that's begun, but a lot of work that's still to continue. And we will continue to do our very best to make sure that uh, everyone tuning in is available is, is made available of this. Um, through my office and our communications with our families, we will share where you can find this information. We'll share the email address that was mentioned a couple of times tonight and bring all of this to your attention. Not to overwhelm you, but we recognize that there's lots of interest in this and that's that's what we want and that's what we need. Vivian, thanks. Thank you. Um, Marianne, just to follow up on your question, I like to be a little bit more exact when it comes to sharing dollar values that the MSBA has. And if you don't mind, if you will indulge me, I do have a little bit, if you can see my screen here, of information based on the most recent MSBA um, board of directors meeting where the increase effective now would be the building cost, they would contribute $516 a square foot. In addition, there would be a 10% for the site work adding another additional $52 a square foot, bringing the total construction funding limit on eligible spaces to $568 a square foot. There's no change to the OPM fee, the designer fee, or the contingency. So as it stands right now, since we're entering into this with this project at this current phase, the total square foot dollar value that you are looking for that the MSBA would contribute is 568. Thanks Vivian for that. Thank you. Um, I wanna take this opportunity and thank again everyone who's joined uh, this evening. Um, I'd like to suggest if we can take just a few minute break to transition to the Wildwood School Building Committee. We have some folks that are gonna be joining us. Those that have been a part of this, um, We'll take a few minute break and if we can come back, uh, uh, let's say at 7.05 and get started. Anyone who's joined from the community is welcome to stay on uh, the call. That We're using the same Zoom link, um, but if not, thank you again for being here tonight uh, and have a good rest of the evening.